I'm here with our next artist um, who's going to be showing from the 4th of April. We still haven't decided on a name um, for the exhibition and again sometimes that is also part of the process um, and I'm happy to be working with um, the artist today on finalizing that aspect as well as we work um, over the next um, few days on the um, final bits and pieces for the exhibition. Let's get straight in. Good morning. Hello, good morning. Thank you I'm for being Yeah, I'm very pleased to have you here with me today. Um, me and you have been um, chatting and meeting and we've had lots of conversations since I think January because I, I mean, I personally find you a very interesting person and there is so much depth to your work and to your personality. And it was very important for me to uh, connect with you uh, to, to really delve more into your very exquisite, but also very important work. Um, I will start by, I mean, over to you to introduce yourself and to tell us um, a little bit about yourself, really. I'm hoping to not talk too much and give you the opportunity to speak um, firstly about yourself, um, secondly, a little bit about your journey and then uh, I suppose finally we'll get to speaking about your studio work and your performance work. Okay thank you. Well so my name is Kilian Becker and uh, my artist name is the Phantom Matt, Phantom AT and um, this work has never been shown. Shall we, in... shall we talk about that? Shall we talk about you know your yeah. artist <laughs> the, the reason behind the, your artist's name. Oh, my artist's name, yeah. Um, so I've done a, my first seven years of professional art, I have been working more conceptual and I've done a series of works around Phantom. Uh, you know, the I think it's more of a German term. It's called the phantom drawing when the police um, draws the, a face uh, from someone's description. And uh, I've done that, ask people to describe me someone. And I've done a number of things like going blindfolded through a museum, which I've never seen before, and then going back to the studio and drawing it. And so a lot of things were related to the phantom as the original definition is someone who comes back from the dead, who isn't finished. <laughs> and uh, I sometimes, uh, yeah, I work with this other dimension somehow. The, the ghosts and yeah, the 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 things that are really there, the, but they are somewhere in the air. So the the, the etheric, I guess. An idea of sort of transcending, connecting physical with the spiritual, um, and trying to um, give that, I suppose, a face, a, a mark that is physical. Um, great. Um, so that's a little bit about your artist name. And um, um, I wanted to know what was the reason behind your interest in making those phantom drawings inspired by the police drawings of um, people that they are looking for. So, you know, they wanted, is it, is it yeah. something about the establishment or law and order? Or oh, no, no, it was just an inspiration. So I detached from the police it was more uh, the idea of uh, investigating what is art by removing one element so for example if I'm blindfolded but I'm a visual artist what happens then so I also did uh, things where I would translate uh, a performance to a painting and from the painting to um, a cake, <laughs> yeah. And so, so through the process of translation, I was, I was investigating what is, 
what is the core of art, what is the medium. And so it was, I kind of, I also did uh, start a PhD in philosophy for three years. And I think it influenced my, my thinking. And um, it was only in the last three years before lockdown that I started painting for the first time in my life without any concept. And uh, it was very, was very liberating. And um, I just left this, this words behind and I created art out of silence. And that can just stand on its own. And also had the courage to create something pretty. It took me a very long time and it's not, um, sometimes people say, oh, it's de decorative. And I say, well, then you haven't looked at it properly. It, it's not for me. Um, it's, uh, it comes, it takes courage to, it, it's easy to do contemporary art that's edgy and it's easy to do something um when you do something ugly it sounds like oh yeah this is important artwork <laughs> and uh, and uh i think it's it's not very cool to do something beautiful but then beauty beauty is 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 um is what what nurtures us right yeah, yeah. i mean i i would say then you are you know a conceptual artist um, if we to try to uh, assert, you know, what um, we can say about your, you know, your work, because then it was the conceptual arts artist or the art movement. I mean, its beginning was all about that, you know, this whole questioning of what art is and whether it should follow certain um, rules and, you know, um, and moving away from the um like everything that you said really you said it best <laughs> with regards to your work um so how about uh in the last sort of few years i mean in um you started this body of work working with silk which i really really love and um not because it's beauty, beautiful necessarily, I mean, it is beautiful because, I mean, we cannot say that silk is not a beautiful medium. Silk is a beautiful medium. So the artwork itself also is, um, or I suppose the canvas or the material or how, it, how it's presented, um, it does reflect also as well on how the viewer mm -hmm. might receive the work, you know? Um, yeah, so will you tell me a little bit about those paintings? How did they come about? Because I mean, we are showing some of those large uh, scale silk paintings. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so um, it was. It, I used to work a lot with paper before, and I was I was always interested in the in the thin, uh, translucent things, and silk was always in the back of my mind. But it was really funny um, because only I started transition really a uh, couple of years ago. And uh, from, so I was born female and now I, I live as a man. And uh, it was that being a man allowed me to, to do something more feminine like silk. <laughs> like okay. I had, I had this, um, um weird uh pseudo feminism that i didn't want to do any anything to do with anything that's like sewing or or any of the so-called female um things like cooking okay <laughs> i don't want to have anything to do with it because you were didn't want to identify as female you know deep down so you didn't want to do anything typically, I suppose, or stereotypically, of course, that's not all that women do, but 
um, yes. sort of traditionally, um, yeah. you know, things that are perceived to be feminine, um, you know, um, yeah. Um, so, yeah. yeah, so that's interesting. So yeah. it's, it's um, so it, the silk itself is sort of marking a, a turning point and a feeling of liberation, I suppose, in a way. And you were able to now, now that you feel you have, you know, um, been able to make that uh, move and transition, you're free from, um, you know, uh, constraints of which medium I suppose to use. And yeah, I think they're really very nice, those paintings. Do you want to tell us about the paintings themselves, not just the use of yeah. self? So I, um, so the inspiration came from um, during meditation um, in which I see like patterns and like colors that don't exist on this planet almost um, and very beautiful things and I just wanted to document them um I have a, a meditation practice which is a form of trance so I put myself in the type of trance and how do you do that I mean that sounds very exciting and I think we'd benefit from knowing how to do this type of meditation <laughs> yeah um I, well you can you can learn it. Um, um, I, it's been so long that I learned it. It's very hard to explain how I do it. Um, there are techniques uh, like counting or uh, like it's the cue. The clue is to relax deeply <clears throat> and then allow things to happen. Mm -hmm. So. I would, I would see um, patterns and in, as a, so I close my eyes and I would see patterns and colors and and sometimes like landscapes like like in a dream. So you you get very close to being asleep and and uh, then I would uh, you know try to document this in the drawing, in the painting. Of course, it's very hard to remember and it's very hard to, it's very frustrating to, to capture it because um, the, these uh, visions are so beautiful and um, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's almost like when you try to, um, when you try to remember a dream, it's, it's it's not, and you you use words. It's not the dream itself. It's 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 it, it seems quite banal compared to the real experience. Yeah. So um, I mean, I want to. So this is really interesting. The different techniques, and I suppose I can hear uh, a little bit about sort of your influences. So so conceptual art, maybe some surrealism there. Uh, what artists do you uh, you know take inspiration? from or studied or, you know, admire really. And, you know. Um, well, so someone that used to play a big role was actually money and with the colors and, and also creating this um, space where like an oscillating space, like the canvas, you don't really know where it starts and ends and mm -hmm. yeah. um, playing with this reality, I guess. So similar that, that also like Van Gogh has similar things like, um, and um, you also like um, Rothko with the monochrome colors. Yeah, I love so, yeah, so so I think um, um, I'm definitely a person who can, who stands in front of the Rothko and ha does get a lot of emotions from it. I feel 
I can get, I can sort of go into sort of like, you know, the trance meditative um, state, just being in front of a Rothko. And I don't know how that happens really, because it's not something that's intentional. I'm not doing it intentionally, but I suppose, yeah, I, this layer of colors, they come through even though, you know. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they're really hard. They're, they, they lose a lot when they are photographed, like, because you, they, when you stand in front of them, they, they, some of them change color, yeah. the, to, depending on which angle and yeah, it's-, it's yes, uh, yes, 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 yes. Right. Okay, um, so going back, so I sort of interjected and, you know, and um, wanted to uh, ask you about how you do the meditation, but let's go back to, um, you know, once you are in this meditative state, um, and then, you know, like you said, you can't remember everything, but you 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 get an essence of what you want to put on canvas. So after that, what is the process that you take? Do you go straight to the studio or? Well, so before going to meditation, I would prepare the the background. So that would be more like um, random colors no 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 not, not random but um when you do this silk uh colors they run you, you you do a little drop and it just becomes this big or this big or this you don't know how it's going to end like so mm -hmm. there's a, a it's very experimental the 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 batter the background is just uh trying to picture the color and uh, and then once that's dried um i do the meditation and i mostly do sketches and and then i take them to the studio and transfer transfer them and so in the beginning i i i, I call it like the chaotic phase where i just do some bold things and then I, once that finished, I almost need to repair things and, and uh, I need to maybe merge some lines to make it a bit less busy. Or it's, it's, it's almost like doing cross, cross, how's the English word? Cross puzzles sometimes. Puzzles, yeah. Yeah, so to, to keep the balance because I messed up so. <laughs> much and um, but I um yeah so I want to go a bit personal because obviously the, the your personal journey over the last um few years um just before lockdown um, um I mean you've shared with me that in 2018 you moved to East Ham um and that's when you started to uh you know Sort of find more personal peaceful personal space to create but that also coincided with other you know um changes like you know transitioning so do you want to tell us a little bit about that period and how that has because you know it change um is is never easy um, yeah. I admire everyone who is able to say, okay, this is the time and I'm going to do it and commits to it despite the, because some of the conflict sometimes comes from within, it's not always external. Yeah. yeah tell us so, about that? And how yeah, art so, plays a role in sort of that period of liberation. It is, yeah. Yeah, so before I transitioned, when I heard transgender saying, Oh, it's like being like it's dying. It's like dying and being reborn again. I, I thought, well, you might be exact. I think you're exaggerating. <laughs> but when you go through it, it is um, just the the medical process is it's really um, like um, it's almost like a reprogramming of the the hormones. Your 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 brain, your hormones, your feelings, the hormones influence your feelings and the way, you're, the way you eat, the way you, you move your body, the, the, um, 
if you want to move more uh, your body, that's what I experienced, um, not everyone. I mean, every transition is completely individual. It, when you want to move not, your body, what, yeah. sorry, what? Well, what so, we so uh, for me, the hormones made me more physically active. Okay. And what, you mean example, more, like male hormones? Uh, yeah, yeah. But also, so people also describe that about uh, female hormones. It's not. Okay. Yeah, obviously, it's um, it's 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 interesting. It's, it's it's like they describe it as a second puberty. It's like a rewiring of uh, everything, and also how you interact socially. Of course, when you pass as a man, um, there is. Uh, there's way more patriarchy in the world than I assumed. And it's very sad <laughs> to see, you know. And uh, and then to to say, well, I don't want to be that kind of man. I need to know. <laughs> um, very also, interesting. I'm going yeah, to have a private conversation with you about that. It's a whole different subject. Yeah, you, you have valuable insight. <laughs> yes, yes, I do. Yes, yes. Um, and so... Yeah, at the time, obviously, um, the transphobia is, is incredible present and the structural transphobia and you go to a shop and they won't serve you and stuff like that. And you, you the NHS doesn't realize that you have a problem um, because they ignore transgender and it's, 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 um, it is, um, it is. It has then also been. So my initial phase was to do these paintings as a way to, um, as a safe space, and uh, as a way that that would also it would always make me feel good. You know, every day I would um, paint, and I would need this ritual every day. And this was the time where everything was in order and then I'll go out to the world with all these million problems that, that I mean, that's transition. That's beautiful has. because it does yeah. also lend itself to, you know, all the studies, all the, uh, you know, especially recently there's been a lot of focus on um, getting it across to everybody that art, you know, is a great medium for well-being, you know, and um, because of, of course the, camp the canvas, the paint, uh, it doesn't discriminate you know uh, and then also like you said it's a safe space for you because not everybody is required to show their work but then when you get to that stage where you feel like okay I can exhibit and share it with everyone it just like like the name you suggested for the exhibition it solidifies the thoughts um, so great I'm really uh, yeah. excited I mean I could speak to you Kilian forever about all of this yeah. Uh, okay. Perhaps maybe when we are coming, you are gonna give a performance as well. You're gonna uh, we, you're gonna arrange a performance. Um, Can I say so, one thing about the performance? Yes, of like, course. Yeah, so so, uh, but I also now I'm at the stage where I think it it uh, it isn't enough to work abstract. So I'm trying to bring the transgender identity more into my work. Which is why I create this performance, which will happen in the St. Margaret's house. And um, I would like us to have another artist interview yeah. with regards okay, to the sure. so yeah. we can talk yeah. about yeah. it and give it give it the, okay. the time. Uh, yeah. It, yes. Okay. Um, so if you're happy to come back um, in um, you know early May and we can do the conversation about the performance, because obviously it's not the first performance. Uh, you're doing it's something that's you know it's an established um, aspect of your practice and I would like to speak about that you know in more details um I just have a small request uh for our viewers um just can we have a sneak peek of your work can we because you know you have all this beautiful work you're in the studio you have lots of beautiful stuff behind you can you um show us a little bit of something okay Right, this is going to be a bit experimental, so it's, it's not very tidy. You like, you like experimental, it, it goes <laughs> into these ones. Yep. 
I can see them clearly. Yeah. And then there is uh, that one. And Very nice. Let's not give it all away, but yes. So yeah. on the 4th of April, everyone will be able to see your beautiful work hung on the walls at the Gallery Cafe at St. Margaret's. And I hope everybody makes it to have a look because um, and enjoy the work. And then um, we'll be putting a lot more information about uh, the artist Kilian Becker and also the performance that is going to be taking place at the chapel at St Margaret's house um, on the 15th of May of this year um, and yes um, Kilian is a pleasure always to um, talk with you and um, I wish we had two hours because I think that's the minimum we need <laughs> to, uh, you know, get behind uh, you as a very fascinating person. Um, I was also thinking perhaps maybe you can think around, um, you know, maybe creating some type of workshop where we can, where you can invite uh, people to um, do some of this meditative drawing um, because I think that'd be very, very fascinating. So yeah, so we can talk about that more. But for now, um, I would like you to enjoy this beautiful day. And thank you. And we will all see you at some see your work at Some Margaret's with Cows on the 4th of April. For yes, six weeks. Thank you very much, Mai. And <laughs> wonderful to meet you. <laughs> thank you. I'll speak to you soon. See you soon. Bye. Okay.